Oh, we love the flash. He is fast, like really fast, right? Like really, really fast. I guess you get the point. But it is not necessary that being the fastest is always a better thing, right? Hey everyone, Mukul here. So yeah, looks like OnePlus is definitely pushing its upcoming 65 watt charging on the 8T as it's uh, one of the major USPs. So I really wanted to pull your focus on the fact that for who is it really necessary and what's going on in the fast charging market actually. I mean, I've seen a lot of comments from people recently looking to buy either the OnePlus 8 and even the 7 series immediately and not wait for the 8T, especially when now most of us know that its main advantage is the 65 watt fast charging and basically nothing else. So really, who needs it? Who needs it? Who needs it? OnePlus is using and marketing its 30 watt uh, wrap charging for a long time. So when Oppo introduced the 65 watt fast charging with the Oppo X2 Pro, it kind of cleared the speculations that yes, the next phones from OnePlus will also be coming with the same 65 watt charging as rebranded uh, wrap charging of course. This was of course inevitable, like that cape to Superman or no cape to Goku. So let us first assess the fast charging market and let's uh, contemplate from whom this super fast charging is really for. I made sure to only assess the phones which comes with these fast chargers inside the box as really I have rarely seen someone buy a better charger after buying an expensive phone or even a cheaper phone as a matter of fact. I am not assessing the cost factor here of these phones at all, mostly because that is not the point of this video. But I might just mention it here and there as companies are using the fast charging factor as their main marketing material anyway. Charging the battery to complete 100% depletes the battery life drastically so I made sure to assess the scenario until the 90% mark here. And as you can see, the Mi 10 Ultra is crazily fast. It has two separate batteries inside of it instead of one so that the depletion of the battery life and longevity can be moderated as that 120 watts is a freaking too fast charging speed for a phone and especially for the health of its battery. And as the others follows, the cheaper Realme 7 Pro just take 9 minutes more to charge the same amount of battery by using a 65 watt charger instead of 120 watts which was on the MI. As both of these phones come with a 4500 mAh battery on them, the 90% of 4500 is 4050. And that's math So clearly twice the charging wattage from the power brick doesn't mean uh, twice the charging speeds. The Oppo X2 Pro will take 3 minutes more to charge a capacity which is almost 170 mAh less than the uh, way cheaper Realme 7 Pro. And as we can see the Oppo Reno 4 takes one more minute than the X2 Pro to charge about 200 mAh uh, less of a battery on it with the same 65 watt charging. So these phones are really optimized quite differently so that they don't blow up on your face with that insane amount of fast 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 charging. Damn there should be a way to say fast faster than fast. What? And you can probably see what the OnePlus 8 Pro and the S20 Ultra are doing with respects to fast charging speeds. The 8 Pro takes 50 minutes more to charge than the X2 Pro with half wattage provided by its power brick. And the iPhone 11 Pro Max dropping dead last in the comparison but I think Apple knows how much charging speed is enough for their phones and also not deplete a battery's life if you plan to use your iPhone over several years uh, like how most of the users prefer. So now that we have looked at these comparisons and as we now understand that twice the charging voltage doesn't actually mean twice the charging speeds, I hope this will be able to help you be, uh, decide better on which phone to invest in, especially if you are someone who is looking uh, to invest in a phone which has the fastest charging speeds on the planet right now. But you have to make sure to always achieve these speeds, you have to make sure to always carry the supply charging brick and the cable with your phone at all the time. I mean, with a laptop, most of the people anyway carry their uh, laptop charger, so carrying an extra uh, charger, which is a phone charger, it won't hurt you much, right? I mean, this will definitely hurt me because what am I doing with my life at carrying all these chargers in my backpack all the time and traveling throughout the city? That's a shitty life. But if you do this in practice daily and really love charging your phone until 100% capacity with these insane speeds, then first of all, you will be drastically depleting the life of your phone's battery, which will suck in a couple of years in case you plan to use your phone for really long. And if you don't, then oh yeah, then that's, you are doing a brilliant thing for the next, next user you're going to sell your phone to. But really, the proposition of this is even more absurd knowing that just to get that 30 odd minutes uh, of charging, you actually carried your charger with you throughout the day just for that extra bump in charging speeds. I mean, I hope it was worth it. 
And if you own a phone which actually needs charging before your day ends, especially during the evenings, then my friend, you bought a shitty phone in the first place. So now coming on to the question of who really needs uh, these insane amount of uh, charging speeds. Well, gamers. Gamers who game a lot on their phones and can't really wait for an hour before their next gaming battle, I suppose. I mean, the ASUS ROG 3 did introduce putting the cable right at the center whilst you game. But if you want to enjoy the sheer portability because mobile phones are supposed to be mobile, then you would hate that cable anyway. The other case is people who travel or tour a lot on their motorbikes or those couple of days trips on bicycles. And when you take your lunch break or a short coffee break at a highway diner, a fast charging top up on your phone can really help Help you push your phone for more hours and even help you conserve that extra uh, power bank you are carrying for ultra emergencies. I mean you can definitely hook up to an insanely slow charging adapter on your motorbike and even in a car but it will be really reassuring that you know that in your next 30 odd minutes break you can really charge your phone uh, that fast which can give you at least three hours or more of navigation usage. And because you won't be traveling 365 days a year, even if you fast charge your phone to 100% with these insanely fast chargers on your trips, you won't be depleting your overall battery life much as compared to someone who is charging them, uh, them till 100% on a daily basis. I mean, that's really bad for your phone's battery man or woman or nothing. Let me know if there are other better ways to actually make good use of these insane fast charging speeds on a phone. So do leave a fast like and a sub with the bell if this video helped you in any way. Take care humans. That's all for today. Mewbot out.